Hey, this is Clayton with Everything Ponds, and today we are going to talk about planter liners. So we have a couple different ways to line a planter, and this could be used for growing things in soil. Another thing is sometimes people actually build small formal ponds in a planter, or larger planters in commercial applications. It's more of a rectangular shaped formal pond. Another thing people will use these liners for is for aquaponics systems and actually growing plants in water. So it's all kind of similar. You're trying to keep water in this structure and keep water out of the wood or whatever your frame is and keep water from leaking out. So like I was saying, there's a couple different ways that you can line a planter like this. The first is our rectangular box liners. So these are 3D shaped drop-in liners that we custom make to your exact size. So that's a length, a width, and a depth. And you basically can drop it in here. There's no folds or pleating necessary. The reason why those are nice is, especially for ponds, when you look in, you just see nice clean lines. You don't see any folds. So the second option is to actually use an RPE, like a sheet liner. And then you actually put it in here and fold it into place. So you'll have to do some nice folding and pleating. So if you're doing a professional application or something more commercial, the drop-in liners are great because it just has that nice clean look. So in this box, I have the two different liner options. So the first here is our premium RPE 30 mil laminated. So we can actually make these liners in a single panel. We'll have some heat welded seams in up to about 60,000 square feet in a single piece. Obviously, for a planter, you wouldn't need that much, unless it was a very large planter. So the second liner option here is a rectangular box welded liner. And the reason why it's this tan color is this, this is a 45 mil polypropylene liner. It actually comes tan on one side, black on the other. And the inside of the liner we usually do in black. You can actually see the black sticking through here. And then we'll put this tan side towards the outside. So once it's installed, you don't actually see the tan. But you know, some people wonder how these box welded liners are packaged. Um, they are not rigid. They are a malleable liner that we can fold and put into a box. And this really helps keep the shipping costs down versus something, you know, like a fiberglass, like a rigid fiberglass liner. It would be a very large, awkward thing to ship and the shipping costs go through the roof. So it's actually one benefit of these liners is the shipping costs are kept down. And uh, we actually offer free shipping on anything over $100, even huge liners. So one more thing we include in the box with every liner is a little bit of repair tape. So it says right here, repair tape. And what this is, is a four inch wide waterproof tape. And what you can actually do is just cut a piece. Like let's say you drop something or an accident happens, you puncture the liner. You can actually cut a piece and uh, stick this down. Uh, make sure you clean the surface really well first, but um, this is just a, an extra thing we throw in the box with every liner. So something else you can do is poke holes in the liner in the bottom for drainage and then you'll get the water just draining out the bottom. Um, but if you have an application where you really don't want any water coming out the bottom, it's an excellent way with a bulkhead fitting to run that water off into some other place like a drain or something and keep everything nice and dry. So the main requirements for putting a liner in a structure like this, this could be made out of wood, concrete, you know, blocks. You could cut straight into the ground as well if you made a nice clean cut into the ground. So you just want to make sure there's nothing sharp or abrasive going into the liner. Another thing is you want to make sure it's nice and firm and it's not going to flex, it's not going to um, compact. So sometimes people have a dirt bottom. If you do that, just make sure it's nice and compacted so it's not going to settle. When you first unpackage this, it'll probably be a little wrinkled. Um, but once you warm it up, it can help work it out. And then also once you get it in the frame and add the water, it really helps push the liner into place. So let's unfold this. So when you first unroll this, it's going to look like it kind of just collapses in a heap on the floor. And it's not looking very 3D shaped yet. But if you notice in the corners here, this is where we have the seam. All right, so let's put the liner inside the box. So yeah, just start by actually pushing the liner into the corners because you've got these heat welded seams in the corners. So you want those right into the corner. And then just go around and push the rest of the liner 
right into the bottom corners of the box. So as you can see, we got some uh, creases and wrinkles going on here, but that's just from the packaging. And over time, I find that these will work themselves out. But now we've got the top edge is kind of flopping in. So obviously we have to do something about this. So if you order the liner with flaps, you'll actually have these flaps sticking up and you can wrap them around the frame. In this case, I have a liner with no flaps. And what we're gonna do is attach the liner along the top edge and hold this nice and tight. And pretty much once that's done, once we have this top edge nice and secure, uh, the liner will be ready to go. All right, so I have this wood strip. It's pretty small, I would say, is this three quarter inch, maybe one inch, and pretty thin. And I'm gonna actually attach this along the top edge to hold this nice and tight. So I've got this pre-cut. So if we put this in here, and we were to attach this down, I think this will end up actually looking pretty good. So there's one thing you want to be really careful of when you do this, and that is you don't want to attach this too tight. Because if you attach, let's, let's say there's the base right there, and then we actually pull this up a bit and attach it. The problem is, this isn't actually touching the bottom in this corner. So if you added a bunch of weight in here, like let's say you filled this with water, soil may be not as important, to be honest, but let's say you filled this with water, this is going to push really hard into this seam and want to pull this liner down. And if this is attached along the top edge, depending on how much weight you have in here, like let's say this is a big tank, four feet deep, a 20 by 20 and four feet deep, you're going to have thousands of pounds of water pushing down. And it could actually rip that top edge off if this is installed too tight. So just keep that in mind. And to make this simpler, I actually i have got some plates here. These are just lead plates for working out. But you can actually put something heavy in that corner and that'll help find the base for you so that you don't end up installing the liner too tight. So after you got something heavy along the bottom, you're going to want to line up your strip and still make sure, if it was me, I wouldn't install this super tight. I would almost just leave a little bit of room, a little bit of a bubble, so there's no way when the water is added that it's gonna yank this off. So I've pretty much got this wood strip where I want it now. And so I've got some clamps here just to hold things in place while I screw it tight. All right, so I got my wood strip where I want it. I've adjusted my clamps. I think I'm gonna put about five screws in to hold this nice and tight, but I'm a little worried about this wood splitting, so I'm actually gonna drill some holes first. And now we're just going to install these screws. I've picked screws that are hopefully just the right length so we go through the trim and won't poke out the other side of the planter. So as you can see, I have my first wood strip in here. I'm gonna finish this part up later with the other parts. And I'm gonna jump into the RPE liner now to show how to install an RPE liner in a similar planter. So when you order the liner, it will come in a roll like this. This is a pretty small one, so it's a small roll. But you know, if you order a huge one, like we can make up to 60,000 square feet in a single panel, that would be a roll that's like this big. So let's just cut this. So when you buy a sheet of liner like this, it's not quite as plug and play as the box with the liner, which you basically just drop in and it's preformed to that exact shape. With this one, we're going to have to do some folding. 
So like the polypropylene box welded liner, when you first open up a liner like this, you'll have a few creases in there. If you were to stick this out in the sun and warm it up, this will help work these out. And over time, they will work out as well. It's just that I just took this out of the box. So when you're folding a flat sheet liner like this into a box like this, the first step is you want to get it in here and push it down into the corners. And then we are going to try to do some nice folding to make everything look neat and tidy. That is the goal. In the end, you're still going to have some folds. And probably the better at folding you are, the better this is going to look. It's never going to look quite as clean as the rectangular box welded liner that I showed you first. If you have anybody in your life that's really good at wrapping presents, this is kind of similar to that. Maybe you want to get them involved for this step. So first thing first, get the liner up over the top. And we want to roughly center it. So once we got that up there, we're going to push the liner into the frame and try to get this nice and tight along the, the bottom edge. So this material is definitely not as easy to get in as a box welded liner, but you will save some money. So it is a bit of a trade-off. With the box liner, you just drop it in, the corners are pre-seamed, good to go. Um, with this one, you're going to have to do a little bit of pushing. So you've got to get it in here and then push it into the corners. And once you got it into the corners, I'd recommend you know, using some kind of weight. I've got some lead weights here. And then what I've done is done some folding where I actually fold this behind. So when you look inside here, you actually don't see the fold. You'll feel it. It's behind this wall right here. But now we have a pretty clean corner. So we've got it on both sides. Got a fold on this side, which is right here. So it's actually behind. So really important, make sure that your liner is all the way down to the corner. Don't do any folding if you've got a big bubble and it's not touching the corner. Because if you actually add water in here or anything else like soil, it's going to push down into the corner. So when you attach it along the top edge, you just want to make sure this is nice and tight so it doesn't pull off the fastening. So the way I'm going to install this is I'm going to attach this wood strip along the top edge before I cut the liner. So I'm going to find the edge of the planter, I'm going to install my wood strip, and then after it's in, then I'm going to take a razor and cut all this extra material off. What you're going to have to do though in order to get this pulled over the edge in order to clamp the wood is probably cut down this corner a bit. So I'm going to do that first. It is one nice thing about this liner is you can cut it with scissors or a knife. So there, we've got that now. Okay, so I've got the liner in here. It's definitely quite a bit more work than installing the box welded liner. You do have to do some folding and it takes some wrestling. It probably took me a solid 10 or 15 minutes to get this in here, whereas the box liner was more like one minute. So I've got my wood strip on here now with some clamps. I'm going to be installing this about a, an inch down, maybe three quarters of an inch down from the top, similar to what I did with the box welded liner. So you do have, when you're installing this wood strip here, you're going over three layers of material. That is one downside of this compared to the box welded liner. It's just a single layer of material. But right here, you've got the fold behind. So make sure that your liner is all the way down to the ground. It's usually better to have it too loose than too tight. So what I'm going to do is screw this wood in. I'm going to drill some holes first so I don't split this wood. And then after this is installed, I can actually take a razor and cut this along the top edge. So that is the plan.
So I think we can take this off now. So there, we got it nicely secured along the top edge. If we now go ahead and do this around the whole top edge, then what we can do is take a razor and trim the liner right above here and we'll have a nice clean termination. So here's our finished product of both different liners. We've got the box welded liner, 45 mil polypropylene, and then we've got the premium RPE 30 mil laminated liner, which is a flat sheet that we folded into place. So hopefully this video gives you an idea of the pros and cons of each system. If you have any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with us. You can go to our website and book a phone call, or you can send us an email. We are happy to help with you know, designing your pond or helping you size a liner. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out the video and I hope you have a great day.